you were running late it was the first day of school and here you were running late could you be any worse of a student you heard your footsteps passing by ua the gate was still open as a few students rushed past you at least there was that kids from ua were normal students too you rounded a large convenience store corner almost sprinting down the crowded sidewalk you came to a hurried stop the light for the crosswalk shutting off you tapped your foot against the pavement, checking your phone for the time. Ten minutes. You would bloody ten minutes before you were late on your first day of school. You groaned into your coat, shivering even with the large green thing covering you. You watched the crosswalk sign, trying to will it with your mind to light up. You paid no attention to the people on the other side of the crosswalk or the people on your side. Your entire focus was on the sign. When it glowed, you practically launched yourself across the road. Your brisk walking left no room for accidents. It was at the halfway point when someone bumped into you. They must have been going at the same speed as you, or maybe faster, because when your shoulder knocked together, it was like someone had dropped a boulder onto your arm. You seethed in a curse, gripping your shoulder, the person did the same. You were turned around when you'd collided, and therefore now facing each other. The boy had a raven head, and was about an inch shorter than you, though it was his uniform that captured the base of your attention. You ran your eyes up and down, inspecting him. He watched your eyes as you did so. When you looked up, finally letting your eyes meet his, you gave a brisk nod. He seemed to understand and nodded back. Then, as if you had not just shattered your shoulders, you turned back around simultaneously and finished the trek to the other side of the crosswalk. The memory of the UA boy faded from your memory as you approached your school building with less than three minutes to spare. You raced against the clock, bursting into your classroom with sweat dripping down your cream brown skin. A few of your friends held in their laughs as you waddled uncomfortably to the last seat available. You sent silent glares to shut them up, but it seemed to only fuel their laughter. The walk home was less anxious. You approached the crosswalk, leaning against the pole as you pushed the button on the other side, without succession in the crosswalk sign. Sleepiness drifted over you as you surveyed the other side of the crosswalk. Incidentally, your eyes snagged on a UA uniform, the only one in the crowd you could see. You found it was the boy from this morning, and he too was eyeing you, though in his eyes shone curiosity. He met your gaze and you held his stare, watching him. You had held each other in place with such intensity that neither of you had noticed when the crosswalk sign glowed. People were already making their way across the cross. And with a bit of color staining your cheeks, you made to do the same. It was quick and efficient. You glided past the UA boy, your eyes cutting corners to watch how the other moved. Then you were looking straight, toward home. You turned the corner of the convenience store, past UA, and were home a few minutes later. The next day, you saw the UA boy. Again, you hadn't tried to look for him in the bustling crowd of people. Thankfully, you hadn't been running late. But despite the other UA uniforms, you'd found his stare at a moment's notice. He had already found you, watching you with that unnerving curiosity. A week had gone by, then two, and you were done with the anonymity, fed up with the whole situation. So, this Monday, before your walk to school, you sat in your bed and wrote your number on a small piece of paper. You may have also added a little note that read, if you're curious, then just ask. You found yourself at the crosswalk again, maybe a little earlier than usual, but it is what it is. You brushed a lock of brown curly hair back, tucking it behind your ears as you waited for the UA boy to show up. You didn't have to wait long. Once you saw him, 
you made sure to catch his eyes. You waved, a small smile lining your lips. He watched you, his beak turning up a little. You nodded your head backward, then lifted the paper in your hand. He nodded slightly, and you took that as, Yes, I will meet you in the middle, even though you are a stranger and could very well be trying to stab me, despite your age. The crosswalk sign lit up. You began walking, trying to angle yourself to a point where you would walk right past the Yue boy. Your left hand held the paper, folded neatly. His eyes never left you, or the paper in your hand. The action was smooth, and way you thought a bird's wings, catching the way of the wind would be. The paper was passed from hand to hand in seconds. Then you were on your way to your separate schools. You hadn't expected much from the paper, but he was cute, and you thought, what the hell? You certainly didn't have anything to lose. You went to separate schools, and the most awkward thing you'd have to do was use the same damn crosswalk. His message came at lunch. What's your name? Your reply wasn't immediate. You don't know why, but you decided to wait to message him. It wasn't part of some game you were playing. You just had a feeling you didn't want to lead him on if you suddenly became bored. A few times you would jump into things like that, and they did not end well. The feeling did not go away. In fact, you couldn't stop thinking about his message. It was chewing you from the inside out. Your fingers itched to press the buttons on your phone to click the send button. When your teacher wasn't looking, you snatched your phone from your jacket pocket, even with the warning looks given to you by your friends. You pulled up his name, which was the title you'd given him since your first encounter, UA Boy, and hurriedly typed, Sakura, and yours? You stuffed your phone back into your pocket, just in time, ignoring the annoyed looks of your friends. That day, he'd stopped you, right in the middle of the crosswalk, in fact, and asked if you'd wanted to go to a cafe. Why he hadn't asked you over text, you had no idea. You did appreciate the effort he put in, however. Most guys you knew wouldn't have. A month went by, and you learned the name of your new friend. Well, you'd learned it the day he'd learned yours. But it had been two weeks since then, a full month of knowing Fumikage Tokuyami. You weren't sexually attracted to him. This you knew for sure. You weren't sexually attracted to anyone. Even still, you couldn't help the feeling of your heart speeding up whenever you saw him on the other side of a crosswalk. Your brown eyes found his no longer accidental. You now looked for him, and that was all your friends needed to know before they knew you had a thing for him. Continuously, you told him there was nothing going on. Which was the truth. Though curious, you had no idea of what Fumikage felt if he even liked girls at all. Your friends still insisted on meeting him, and he agreed, with the exception that you meet his friends. You told him you were sorry for what he'd have to endure, knowing there was a large possibility Fumikage did not see you in a romantic way. Two months had passed, and Fumikage had met your friends, but you had yet to meet his. Their first impression of him went alright for the most part, though you still remember the heat in his eyes, the only indication that he'd been blushing at their comments. You shook your head, your own cheeks flaring up as well. Spring had come and gone. It was early September, and the autumn season set a new tone for romance. It was in the air, as February was a little more than a few months away. Of course, Christmas was the kicker, but you were most excited for chocolate day. You wouldn't go out of your way to make chocolate, but you didn't want to buy him cheap junk either. Your friends had said that if Fumikage saw you in that sort of way, he'd repay you with chocolates on white day. It was a simple way to ask without asking, though it was also easier for you. Fumikage didn't show up at the crosswalk that week, or the week after. You messaged him, but to no avail. You didn't want to seem like a clingy or obsessive girl, so you didn't text him after the first message you'd sent. 
Your first theory was that he'd moved and hadn't told you. Maybe he'd gotten a new phone number with the move and hadn't bothered to add your number to it. It was a sound theory, one that you might have leaned on if it hadn't been for the lack of UA students going back and forth, or the fact that the UA gate no longer sat open. The months passed in a blur. December came and went, and the third term of the school year appeared at your doorstep with the swiftness of a cheetah's sprint. The first morning on the second week of January, Bumi Kage messaged you. He had not moved and had not gotten a new phone with a new number. No, his explanation was more valid than that, and it took everything in you not to demand where he was at that exact moment. Instead, you did the civilized thing and called him, demanding if he was okay as if you'd sound any less hysterical on the phone than over text. A humorous chuckle sent you over the edge, but you let him say, Sorry, I didn't realize I scared you that much. You! We talked every day for four months. We ate at cafes and walked to the convenience stores before school. Gods, I don't even remember how many times. And then one day you just up and disappear? No calls, no messages, no word from where you went or how you were? Fumi Kage went quiet for a moment. You took in the breath you so desperately needed, then whispered in a trembling voice, nine months. You were gone for nine months. I don't even know if you're good at, I don't know if you're good at math, but four does not cancel out nine. What happened? Fumi Kage said, you wait, had dorms implanted to keep us, their students, safer. After the League of Villains attacked us, my class, Winnie, we weren't supposed to tell anyone about the dorms. Our family only knew because we needed consent to live on campus. He paused, allowing you time to take in the information. Fumikage continued. When we got settled in, I was going to text you, but I tripped down the stairs and dropped my phone before I could. You cut him off. You couldn't have texted me before that? You know, like a normal person? I wanted to. Believe me, I asked. Every day, I asked my sensei when I could talk to my friends outside of B-Way. You felt tears building up again, and Fumikage sighed. When they finally said we could reach out to people other than our family, my first thought was to text you, to tell you what happened. You took in a deep breath waiting for his long, long explanation. I fell down the stairs, and my phone broke. I was fine, but my phone, it needed tons of repairs. I was going to get a new one before the end of the second term. The League of Villains attacked again. You held your breath for what he was about to say, hoping it wasn't what you thought it was. I was injured, severely, along with many of my classmates. One of them was taken, was... Fumikage seemed to hesitate at that, as if it was too much to relive. It's fine, you said, and completely meant it. I just, are you okay? Fumikage sucked in a shaky breath. You could picture tears rimming his eyes. Fumikage? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Fumikage, where are you? Uh, dorms, you ate my, um, room. Is there any way I is there any way you can leave? <laughs> Not unless I want to get expelled. You sighed, standing up. That's fine. Any chance I could go over there? Um, I guess, as long as you don't stay past eight. Perfect. Oh yeah, no, you were in love. Like full on rom com cheesy popcorn Hollywood movie in love. What would it take to express it? Well, that's what the chocolates in your hands were for. Fumikage was going to meet you after school, and that's when you were going to give him the chocolates. Of course, you'd brought a change of clothes in your backpack. No way were you giving him these chocolates in your uniform. After school, your friends helped you change. One held your backpack while the other handed you clothes. You were going to bring another pair of shoes, but I decided to wear the shoes to your chocolate outfit with your uniform. Never mind how brazen it looked. You stepped out of the large stall, going to the mirror to fix the ruffles of your clothing. You look fine, Sakura, your friend said, 
honest. He's an idiot if he doesn't see your worth. You'd thank them for their kind words, but had kindly said that it was his choice to make, regardless of what it was. Fumikage was early, and you knew this because you wanted to be early. What the hell was he doing here so early? You cursed him for his punctuation. Before walking into the cafe, decorated with pink and red bows and hearts, you looked in through the slightly reflective glass and fluffed your hair a tiny bit. Your brown eyes were sharp and confident. You stepped into the cafe. Fumikage's stare was like none he'd ever given you. He was taller, which you would notice the night you'd gone to his dorm, finally meeting the friends you'd promised you would long ago. You looked stunning. Your eyes glowed with infatuation. Whether he'd noticed or not, Fumikage didn't say anything. His eyes caught the chocolates wrapped in your red ribbon, and he raised an eyebrow at you. Your smile turned crooked, cheeks burning with the intensity of a blue fire. For you, you extended the chocolates. If you'll accept them? So, maybe you were pining, but did that really make you such a bad person? Thank you, I kindly accept. Fumikage said, taking the chocolates from your hand. I assume this means I'll have to pay back the offer a month from now? You waved your hands, shaking. No, no, you don't have to. I did this because I wanted to. His smile was feverish. Well then, I would like to repay you because I, as well, want to. Your stupid silly grin was a reflection of his. He grabbed your hand and walked you to the table he had picked out for you, directly in the center as if he'd wanted to show you off. Yeah, okay. Maybe it was just a huge mistake on your part for being late for the first day of school, and maybe it was a coincidence he'd been late as well. But there was no way, no way in hell, that you bumming into him when there were plenty of other people surrounding the two of you wasn't fate. You refused to believe it was anything but...